Hey everyone, this week we're going to talk about the easy way to edit your photography in Lightroom using adaptive profiles. So if you're a Lightroom user, even if you've been using it for quite a while now to edit your photography, there may be a feature that you've overlooked, and that is profiles. So we all play around with the sliders, edit the image, but before we start, it's very easy not to notice the little drop down with a profile which is basically the starting point for your image. I'm going to get onto what profiles actually are a little bit later on and in particular we're going to look at a relatively new feature in Lightroom which is adaptive profiles. So I was out recently in my local woodland area capturing some images of the bluebells because it's springtime now, it's looking great with all the bluebells out and we're going to edit one of those images today and talk about adaptive profiles as we go along. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. We're already in develop, and this is the image we're going to be working on. So I'm going to come down under basic, and first of all, we'll talk about what profiles are. So you see right here, we've got the, the word profile, and we can drop this menu down, and we can choose a number of different profiles. And profiles are basically like starting points. So by default, it's usually Adobe Color in Lightroom. Sometimes I'll choose Adobe Standard. You see that's slightly more muted, it's not quite as saturated the colour. Or if you want it to be saturated you can go Vivid for example, that's quite a lot of contrast. You can try Adobe Landscape, that's also quite saturated and colourful. But what we're going to talk about today is the adaptive profiles. So we've got two of those, we've got adaptive colour and adaptive black and white. We're just going to talk about adaptive colour today but Basically, the black and white one is, it works the same, but it's for black and white. But if we click Adaptive Colour, this actually uses AI to analyse that particular image, and it will apply a number of settings to the image, such as tone, colour, it'll even apply selective edits, uh, and it'll change the tone or colour to certain parts of the image and not others. But what it doesn't do is change the sliders. So quite often, when I'm editing an image without the adaptive profile, I would come to Auto here, and I'd just click that as a starting point. So you see that quite quickly does a pretty good job of brightening up the image, getting the tone more or less okay, and the colour. And from there I would start tweaking the sliders. But, I'll just undo that again. What happens with adaptive colour is it will apply all those settings, but you see the parameters, the sliders, haven't changed. So from here, I've got a really good starting point to start tweaking and making this image my own. As it is here, it's quite a realistic look, I would say, quite true to life. It doesn't go overboard with the settings. But my own personal style, I think, is a little bit more illustrative or painted than this, so I am going to start tweaking this from here. So the first thing we can do is change the slider for adaptive colour. So that will apply more or less of the adaptive colour profile. So I'm going to bring it to the right a little bit, like that. And it's worth pointing out that you can use the HDR mode by clicking here on the high dynamic range, the HDR button. And that will still work with the adaptive colour profile. But I'm just using the standard dynamic range today, so I'm going to turn that off. And also, I should say that you can only use the adaptive colour profiles with a RAW image. So you can't use JPEG or TIFF, for example. It's only going to work with RAW. So like I said, from here we can start playing around with the regular sliders. So I'm just going to bring up the temperature a little bit, make it a little bit warmer. I think that's okay. don't want it too warm. I think I'll leave the tint where it is, and I can bring down the highlights a bit if I want. I think it's not too bad to be honest, the adaptive colour profile has done a fairly good job. Maybe bring up the shadows a touch. But I think that's about it because most of the edits I'm going to make to the tone are going to be selective ones. So I will just change the presence sliders. So going to bring down the clarity just to get that really soft ethereal look I really do like that with woodland shots and also with the texture as well 
and I'll leave the vibrance and saturation because it's already quite a vibrant and saturated image. But I will make some changes with the colour mixer. So I'm just going to tweak the colour of the blues because I've put the temperature up now to the warmer end of the scale and that's made the bluebells look a bit more purple. I mean bluebells do tend to look a bit purpley actually anyway but I'm just going to bring them back a little bit to make them more blue. You don't want to go too far, that's going to look silly. But just a touch, maybe to about 10 or 11. And just to make those stand out a little bit more, what I'm going to do is bring down the saturation of the yellow a little bit, uh, and the green. And I'll probably just boost the blue just a little bit. Just to give a bit more prominence to the blue of the bluebells. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with luminance, so I'll leave that. And now I'm going to start putting some selective edits on this. I think first of all I'll probably just crop it, so I'll come up to the crop tool. And I'll just bring that in from the side. Get that tree there on the third line, I think. And yeah, I think that's not too bad. So what I want to do now is just soften this a little bit in the background. I didn't have any fog. It was at sunset time, so it's quite bright and there's not a lot of depth to the image really other than we've got some layers with the branches and things and the trees, but the depth of field is going all the way back, right to the back of the image. So I just want to create a bit more depth by softening this background area. So I'm going to come over to the Selective Edit Tools I'm going to click on Radial Gradient and just draw out a circle here. We can change the feathering amount. I want it soft but not too soft, so round about like that. And what I'm going to do is come down to the Dehaze Slider and just bring that down. You see it softens it, gives it that really soft glowing effect where you've got that late day sun. And I did have that in the woods. In this particular shot you didn't really see that but when I was there in the woods I did see that kind of effect so I think it's quite fine to uh, introduce some of that into this image. I'm going to bring down the clarity and texture a bit as well just to further soften that area. And we can also just bring up the whites a little bit if we want to just brighten that area. To add even more depth, what I'm going to do now is create another mask. And this time I'm going to choose Select Landscape. So this is a fairly recent introduction to Lightroom. We can click on that, it'll analyse the image and it'll allow us to select various things. In this particular image we haven't got too many things to select. Vegetation, which is pretty much all the image, or natural ground. And that's what I want, natural ground. So we can click create mask from that. That creates the mask. And I just want to taper this, so if I click subtract and linear gradient, I can subtract a linear gradient from that so that we have the mask starting at the bottom of the image and gradually fading out towards the back of the image. And the reason I want to do that is because I want my foreground to be a little bit sharper than the background. So what I'm going to do now is bring up clarity. You remember earlier we reduced the clarity and texture from the overall image. I'm introducing some back into the image here in the foreground and that gradually fades out towards the back. So again, adding more depth. Okay, we'll close that. Now we've got some bright areas in the back here between the trees, so I just want to tone those down a little bit. So again, radial gradient, draw that out. I'm going to feather that quite a bit. And I'll place that over the white areas. And now I can reduce the highlights and maybe just tone down the whites a little bit and boost the shadows just to compensate for that white drop 
Okay, so starting to get there a little bit now. Now I just want to brighten up this tree here, and maybe some of this one. So this time with the selective editing tools, I'm going to choose brush. And I'm just going to click once at the bottom of this tree. And it'll draw a line like that. So with this now I can just bring up the shadows a little bit. Maybe even exposure. And a little bit of warmth as well with the colour temperature slider. And that just introduce a little bit of light on the side of that tree now. And we can also paint a little bit of that onto this tree here. So I'm just carefully painting on this left hand side of the tree because that's the side where it would catch the light. Just avoiding the leaves which are closer to the camera. I would do this a little bit more accurately if I had more time, but just for this demonstration I'm going to do this quite quickly. Maybe a little bit just here as well, on this raised area of the tree. Like I said, I would normally spend a bit more time on that, but I think that'll do for now. And finally, what we're going to do is a little bit of cheating. Don't do this if you don't want to upset anybody. <laughs> but I'm going to create some light rays in this. I think that'll really bring this image to life. So we've got these bright areas between the trees here. And what I want to introduce are some shafts of light, really, coming through and shining down onto the, the ground in the centre area here. So the way I'm going to do that is, all in Lightroom, just come back to the Selective Editing Tools, click on Brush, and I'm going to make a smallish brush. Uh, you can do that using the square bracket keys, that's the two keys to the left of the return key on your keyboard. So the, the left square bracket makes the brush smaller, the right bigger. And I'm just going to click once in this bright area here. Now come down to the ground here. And I'm going to make my brush bigger now. And then holding shift on my keyboard, click once. And it'll connect those two areas. And it'll go from the small to the large and create kind of like a cone shape. And then we want an area on the ground that looks like it's been illuminated. So I'll come to the left here, click once. Come to the middle where it's a bit bigger. Join that up. And then I'll do the opposite on the other side. like so. And what we can do with this is just bring up the exposure maybe. We could bring down the dehaze, that will brighten it. Maybe the clarity, bring that down as well. The texture. And you could also bring up the whites maybe. You don't want to overdo it. It needs to look plausible at least. I'll maybe just bring the dehaze back up a touch. We could introduce some warmth as well with the temperature slider. And we can have a second one of those as well. I'm not going to use the same mask, I'm going to create a new mask, but basically do the same thing. The reason I'm making a second mask is because I might want to have slightly less brightness on this one. Bring down the dehaze again. So something a little bit like that. And finally I'm just going to put a vignette on this. So I'll come down to effects. Bring that 
that down a little bit, maybe add some feathering. And that just draws the eye of the viewer into the image to concentrate on this centre area with the light rays. And I might also just get rid of these leaves just down here in the bottom left. So I'll click on the remove tool using generative AI. Just paint over those leaves a little bit and click remove. What you will have to do though, after removing something with the remove tool or healing tool, or if you're rotating the image or applying lens blur, things like that, is you'll have to come back to the regular sliders and you'll see just underneath where it says adaptive colour and the amount slider we've got update. You'll have to just click update to reanalyze the image and apply the adaptive colour profile again. So I'm just going to tinker with this just a little bit more and I'll throw the final image up on screen. So that's how you can use the adaptive profiles in Lightroom to very quickly and simply edit your photography. If you're in a rush, this is going to get you 90% of the way there without having to touch any other sliders or selective editing tools. But remember, this is mainly aimed at beginners and people who are in a rush. So if you want to get a bit more hands-on with your image and have a bit more control, you're probably going to have to use some more of the sliders and the advanced editing methods. Also, if you've got a series of images and you want them all to be consistent, this is probably not the tool for you. It analyzes images on a image by image basis, so it's going to apply different settings to every single image. If you want a more consistent look across many images, you're going to have to go with regular editing. But it is a great feature, try it out, and yeah, that's about it for this video. So, big thanks for watching. As I always say, if you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up down below. If you're a regular, huge thank you to you, and if you're new and you want to subscribe, you can just click down there on the big red button, or over here on this little picture of me, that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing. There are new videos Sunday mornings at 10am UK time. So I hope you can join me for the next one, but until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.